What's up guys, this is Sean and welcome to another episode of the Eheng Podcast and today we'll be an Asking Sean segment answering a question from email from Amos, right? Amos Lau Hey Sean, greetings from Kota Kinabalu I have been following your channel for quite some time and found it very informative I have a few questions and I would like to hear some of your thoughts Number one Property prices and statistics here in KK has been very different from the rest of the states. Property prices here ranging from 600 to 800,000 for a town's house or 1 to 1.5 million for a semi or a corner lot. High property prices here are mainly due to high material costs, high labor and shortage of land. As the value is too congested in KK in a way, may I know what is your thought on such statistics and it seems that our market is not very healthy here. Given that we have to send the same loan rate with our generally lower income compared to slang. Oh. Number two, which leads to my question here. We usually don't have a 5% rental yield on properties here in Sabah. Hence, it seems not possible to have as long as my rental income can cover my monthly installment. Then I'm good to buy another one strategy. Since every property that I add up to my portfolio, the money installment would just take up a portion of my income. And of course, my income would be finite. What would be your long-term strategy to deal with this kind of situation besides making over the property? I know some locals would invest in KL properties, but as there's a much better yield and appreciation over there. Number three, I'm aware that making over the property would tend to increase the rental return. But such 2,000 rental for my terrace house may already reach its cap and tenants may not want to pay more than that. Having to serve a loan of 3000 per month, what would you recommend? Do you think that it is wise to even hold a property at this point? Since there's also maintenance and other hassles, the only point I can think of for holding such property is for my own future use. Looking forward to your wise words. Regards, Mr. Lau. Thank you very much, Mr. Lau. Uh, sending love from Sabah, right? So just to wrap up the question, uh, Mr. Lau is from KK Sabah. And he's asking the, the strategy about property investment because in Sabah, the whole ball game is different, right? The appreciation and rental yield, right, is not as healthy as what we have here in KL. So what's my take? Right? Number two is actually besides making over, right, how do you actually increase the rental returns, right? What would be the long-term strategy to it? Then number three is, uh, do you even think that it's a wise choice to even hold a property at this point? Okay, cool. So before I address question number one, right, uh, it's good that everyone here, right, understand the different demographics, locations, right, also have different strategies really. But we know here in KL, right, as long as the rental return can cover the money installment, then it's fine. Meaning your ROI 4.556, right, 6 is very, very good really. 5 is the market good standard. 4.5 or even 3.8, right, you can cover your interest then good really. And sometimes we, KL people, right, <laughs> Me or so lah. We sometimes take for granted. We want uh, you. We want to increase some more, increase some more. Four point five. Uh, where can make money, right? However, if you look into Penang's demographic, if you look into Johor's demographic, if you look into Sabah's demographic, right, the rental yield is not as high. But this applies to the local market of that particular area. It means that, as we always say in this channel, right, rental return usually is driven by three main things. Like number one, population. No? Number two, job opportunities. No? Number three is the infrastructure, which is also connectivity. La. So if you look into the, the highest density population, it's uh, of course KL, because my logic is every graduate in Malaysia every graduate will want to come to Slangor or KL uh, for a job because there's a lot of job opportunities. Man. But for places like Penang, Sabah and Johor, right, the Airbnb, the tourism type of property seems to be performing way better. Like in KK, right, there's a lot of Airbnb vendors, surprisingly. And in accordance to the makeover guys, right, because we also have a branch there and we noticed that there's a trend that many youngsters don't even want to work really. They just uh, be a grab driver, catching tourists all around the place. And then they also manage Airbnbs and the return is quite lucrative as well as Penang, as well as Johor especially Malacca as well. So tourism, right, then becomes very different. It's a whole different segment altogether. Those are like hotels already. However, this COVID thing actually hits tourism segment the most, right? 
normal days they have made their money but in this kind of situations hotels also cannot sustain already so as you say the cost of buildings in kk is actually very high like, so a terrace is six to eight hundred thousand semi is 1.5 to 2 million uh, right uh basically property is divided into three different costs right the main three things of a property is actually number one land cost number two construction cost number three development cost which is 30 30 30 then 10 percent give or take which is the profit for the developer la. and if you look at why the price can be so high can be only two things la. demand and supply ma. if there's no demand as you will say like the population is actually less and the general income of the people is also lower in comparison to KL la. but I think the supply is not that high as well I understand this theory right because there was once I went to Kuala Pila Kuala Pila is a small town after Seremban right a very small town and the shop lots there that day just nice got launched and for me I wouldn't resist a property launch so I go in and check right the shop lots is actually way more expensive than what we have here in Slango just because the supply is less meaning there's not enough developers there there's not enough new buildings to cater for the high demand for property there especially for commercial lots right once they build up a shop lot some you see like those smaller developers when right, they build maybe 12 shop offices only and all sold out in one day don't even need to launch one because all core friends right all can sell already i suspect that may be the case because if you look into the amount of developers in kk and in kl kl i think you one throw right i think there's like four to five different new projects so let's say puchong only right puchong easily i think easily there's like eight to ten different new projects ongoing at the same time so that's where i think demand i think is somewhat controlled but the supply is rather low that's why the price is always a reflection of the relationship of these two elements. La. So question number two, right? Uh, what would be the strategy besides holding, la, right? I think uh, you can hold with a different end in mind, which means like in KL, right? Let's say you buy a new property today and eight years later, right? Maybe 10, 20% capital appreciation, very good already, right? So that's no longer the flipping game as we mentioned. So what we do here is as long as the rental yield can cover the installment, I'm good kind of strategy. We call it a cash flow strategy like where every building, as long as it can break even or make a little bit money, then you just keep it for the long run, right? Then maybe for you, right? Because what I see here is mainly all landed properties. Lah. I think this also addresses question three as well. I think like your terrace, you are getting 2,000, right? But the mainly installment is actually 3,000. In the first place, terrace house can never break even in terms of money installment and rental returns. So can never break even. Not impossible, lah, but it's very, very rare. Lah. So myself, I got one by luck right in Johor that is by luck because the tenant actually pays sing dollar that's about it so I would suggest right uh, if you invest now I would actually play this game by planning the exit strategy it means that okay today this year I buy right I buy this year then five years later I must sell I'll actually look at two different types of property units so number one is cash flow strategy which is the rental return yield oriented kind of strategy number two is capital appreciation kind of strategy I think the capital appreciation for the landed there is amazing and if you look into the property charts by Napik right every year top of the charts mainly is Sabah not KL right Sabah is the highest and since that's the game right mainly I should play the flipping game instead it means that I buy year one then i plan out the rental yield and maybe year five if i sell how much i want in return then i will actually plan it out then for the cash flow strategies right it will be airbnb oriented kind of developments but now don't touch those kind of things lah. in your case let's say your money installment is three thousand which means that it's around six hundred thousand right the terrace house so a few questions lah. so in five years time uh, will this 600,000 property in five years time become 1 million? So across time, your monthly rental has a tendency to go up and your installment has a tendency to go down. With having all those kind of figures, then I will balance my strategy. Is it five years, but then after I pay tax, does it make sense? Five years, if not, then eight years, 10 years. So I have the end in mind before I buy instead of looking at rental returns but in fact right 600,000 can generate a 2,000 rental it's very 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 good for a terrace house already you know so just to sum it up all over again right I think in KK the ball game would be different uh cash flow properties which is only Airbnb oriented one now don't touch but the return can be very high uh and this is very similar to those properties in Penang, Melaka, JB those 
tourism hotspots lah. But after COVID, all this all mumbles lah. So I will actually look at a capital appreciation, which is actually driven by the actual demand of the location itself. So I would actually look into the data where what's the history of uh, five years progressive in terms of capital appreciation and our balance against that so let's say in your case you bought a 600,000 terrace right every month i need to pay 3,000 installment but i collect 2,000 in rental so every year i cough out 12,000 if i were to hold five years five years is actually 60,000 then in five years time will the 600,000 right how much will it appreciate let's say it's not 1 million let's say it's 900,000 so i make 300,000 minus of the 60,000 200,000 is it worth your effort but I think it is. Lah. So that is only an arbitrary number. Uh, do find out from the data from NAPIC, right? What's the tenancy of property appreciation? Because as I say just now, the property supply there is not as high as in KL. If you look into the chart of uh, overhang properties, right? KK is not as serious as Johor. Johor, that one is the worst, lah, right? So I guess that would be my strategy to plan out your exit strategy first before buying. Because the players there is also not as high, lah, the number of players, the property players, I mean, right? But you can anytime, you are welcome to actually come to KL and invest in the rental year property lah. <laughs> so I think that's all Mr. Lau thank you very much for your email and uh, especially from KK right? I really really appreciate it and for the other audience who still have questions regarding real estate do just email me at t-a-n-i-h-e-r-n-g t-a-n-i-h-e-r-n-g at gmail.com or you can just send me a message on Instagram i-h-e-r-n-g and I'll see you on the next one ciao